ladies and gentlemen, like Mohandas Gandhi awkwardly examining the menu at a steakhouse, this is the Discriminating Gamer. Ladies and gentlemen, do you like mysteries? Well, I mean, other than why this show's still around, right? It's, it's pretty bad. Ladies and gentlemen, I like mysteries, and so I'm very excited to review today Sherlock Holmes, consulting detective from Yastari Games, and Asmodee. Consulting Detective from Mystery Games and Asmodee is quite possibly one of, if not the most unusual board games I have ever reviewed. It's unusual because there really aren't pieces. You really don't have dice. You really don't have cards. It's not really a tabletop game, and yet it kind of is. Ladies and gentlemen, how this game works is... You can play solo, you can play with, I think, up to eight players. But you're sitting around a map of London. Now, this map of London has, of course, uh, the streets, but it also has kind of sections of London, northeast, northwest, southwest, etc., etc. And then every building, of course, has a number on it. Now, what you're going to do at the very beginning of the game is you're going to pick one of ten cases that come with the game. You're going to read a uh, few pages aloud of this uh, from from the uh, mystery here. You're going to read from this aloud so that everybody can hear the particulars of what is going on, uh, what is happening uh, with the story. Now, it usually involves some kind of a murder. Now, here's the thing. You and your friends are the, of course, uh, Baker Street Irregulars. You are the street urchins and whatnot that are out there helping Sherlock Holmes in his investigation. So it's up to you to gather the intelligence. The initial reading of the crime is going to give you some suspects, some clues, but it's all pretty much free form. And then you have to decide what lead you're going to follow. So what you can do is, okay, you mentioned this guy, or you mentioned maybe this clue. I want to investigate this or that. So what you do is you actually go to a directory, and you find the place where that person is um, on the map. You find it on the map, and then you look back in your mystery guide, and you find uh, where that place is or who that person is. And then you read, of course, a section of what they have to tell you. You read that part of the story. Now, you also have a newspaper, and that newspaper is filled with a lot of red herrings, a lot of things that don't matter, but there may be some things in there that are very important, in fact, vitally important to your investigation. So, on your turn, you pick where you're going to go, you read uh, the uh, lead from the book to everybody, and then you, of course, can look at the newspaper. You can look at the directory as well, and, of course, study the map, see if there's anything nearby that, that, that excites your imagination. Then you can go ahead and pass it to the next person who can do the same thing on their turn. Now you can play this game cooperatively or competitively where you're going around all trying to solve this case together or you can just do it until one of you thinks you have the answer. You essentially say, I'm out and you're going to uh, proceed to kind of write, uh, write down what you think the answers are. And then everybody else can finish up then they can write down their answers. Whoever gets the most points is going to win, but it's not that simple. Because what you do is at the end of every one of these books are uh, several questions. Now, most of these are very important. They're worth about 25 points usually. You answer these questions. And they're going to ask you the specifics. You know, who was killed? How were they killed? Uh, what was this person doing? What was that person doing? And then there's going to be a few kind of minor questions that can give you some points if you can answer them correctly that may or may not have something to do directly with the, the case. But critically here, every time you read one of those leads, you have to keep track of it because you're trying to beat Holmes. At the end, it's going to tell you exactly how many leads Holmes used and how he finished the case. Ideally, you want to beat Holmes because Holmes' score is always going to be 100. It's possible you can get more than that, but it's also possible that you're going to get less than that because for every lead that you go over Holmes' case, it's going to deduct points. For every lead, uh, if you do less leads than Holmes, it's going to improve your score. It's going to give you points. 
Wow. So this game is, like I say, really unusual. It's really different. It's really a story game. It's a game of listening. It's a game of really trying to use your imagination to fit the parts together, to try to figure out, okay, we got these suspects, but who is the most likely to kill them? And who you think is the killer or the, 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 the person who has committed the crime is not always who, you, who, who it turns out to be because, of course, you've got all these red herrings everywhere. What's cool about this game, too, is those newspapers, each case has its own newspaper. It's got the same date on it as the case. Well, all of the newspapers from the preceding cases become relevant. So all those older newspapers in each case you do, they, you, you, you can use them and you can go back and search for clues in them. It's really quite fascinating. It's really quite interesting how they have put this together. Now, the game is um, can be kind of long. If you're playing with a lot of players, this game's going to kind of get a little bogged down and seem a little... You're, you're kind of waiting for your turn. You know where you want to go, but you kind of have to wait. So that can be a little frustrating at times. And this is better... Uh, you know, you can play it solo. I don't know that I want to play it solo. I think it's fun talking stuff out with people. But I think maybe a smaller group with a cooperative game is probably ideal. Um, I've just played the competitive games, which was fun, but I, I, I want to try the cooperative one. I think that that's probably going to work out better. But either way, it, this is just so so thematic, so rich, so detailed, and so much fun, and so different from what I have come to expect from tabletop games, that this is an absolute winner. It's a game I've wanted to play for a while. It's been around since the early 1980s, and it, I, I can't believe I haven't played this game until now. Uh, it's really, really a winner. So the recommendation for the discriminating gamer for Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is buy it. Seek it out, Watson. Chip, chip. <laughs> Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and always remember, ladies and gentlemen, that once you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Sherlock Holmes was Mr. Spock's ancestor. See Star Trek VI. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> You alright? <laughs> <laughs>